In this video, I'm going to share seven most common mistakes when working with electric file that lead to different problems, such as rings of fire, damaged and overfiled nails. Coming up! Hello guys, this is Anastasia. Electric nail file is my favorite tool because it helps me to do everything quicker and faster and safer. I use it for everything, for product removal, for fills, for shaping, for nail prep, for Russian manicure, for many things. And it is going to be your favorite tool too if you use it right. But if it will be used incorrectly, in some cases it may lead to damaged nails, to some kind of temporary and permanent damage as well. So my goal for this video is to explain which are typical mistakes that beginner nail technicians are doing, how to avoid them in the future. Let's get started. Mistake number one is using electric nail file that is designed for home use. You can see a lot of them on Amazon and they're designed so people can slightly buff their nails at home and usually they do not have enough power even to remove the product. All they can do is just to slightly buff the skin and the nail. So if you will try removing product with the e-file like this, you will not get any result. But since there is not enough power, it may be buffing the surface, causing frictions and eventually heating. So it may even feel unpleasant and at the end of the day, you will still not get the expected result. So if you would like to work with electric nail file, to remove gel polish, to shape the nails, you need to seek for professional electric nail files. Mistake number two, low quality drill bits. There are so many electric nail files on the market today and most of them are really good, but for some reason they still include this kit of diamond drill bits. Sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it's a little bit different. They are not quality drill bits, please throw them away immediately. So how can you tell if this is a good one or a bad one? With diamond bits, it's quite easy. All you need to do is just to take a close look, maybe you have a magnifying lens, and you will notice that these particles, they are not even. Some particles are big and some of them are really small. And if you have a drill bit like this, all it's going to do is simply to scratch and damage the surface of the skin or the nail plate. So look for professional diamond drill bits. When you see the surface of this diamond drill bit, you will notice that it's shiny like a diamond and these particles are very even and it seems like they have a very similar size. Another common mistake is using electric nail file on the natural nail without any practice. If you open Instagram or TikTok or any other social media, you will see so many great videos with tutorials on Russian manicure and dry manicure and you notice how these nail technicians are working with these drill bits going deep under the cuticles. And the point is, sometimes they go too deep in there, sometimes they're simply qualified to do this because they've been practicing this Russian manicure for many years. And I want to be honest with you guys, this is a very advanced technique. You need to feel electric nail file really good until you can do this. So my best advice is first, you need to learn how to work with electric nail file and the product. Try product removal first, try to do fills, because when you're working with electric file on the product, even if you do something wrong, something incorrect, it's only product, like you're not going to damage it or anything. And only once you feel confident filing the product, shaping, nail extensions, only after this you can try practicing working with electric nail file on your skin, on your natural nails, and only after this on your clients. Because our nails, they have about 80 layers. Now imagine if we damage at least half of them. It's already pretty bad damage to a natural nail. So first you need to learn product removal, fills, nail shaping, and only after that try dry manicure. Next mistake is not as obvious, but I see this a lot, working at a very low speed. And I can relate, because when I started learning how to drive, it's quite scary to drive fast right away, right? We always want to go slow, you know, just in case, so we will have enough time to push the brake and to stop. So I totally get it. 
and I think the same thing with the electric nail file. Once you start working with it, you do not feel as confident yet and you just want to go slow just to keep it safer. It's a right strategy in some ways, but most of the time it's doing the opposite. Let's say if you would like to file the nails short, if you would like to reshape them, or if you'd like to do product removal, working at a very low speed, such as 10 or 12,000 rotations per minute, is not going to do its work. You will get more friction, you will have more heat, more unpleasant heat spikes for you or your client. It's going to vibrate because if you're working with carbide or ceramic drill bits, you need to understand that these flutes, they're like small knives. So if they are rotating faster, it is going to be easier for them to basically shave the layers of the product from the top. But if there's not enough speed, they will not be able to do this. So you will inevitably need to press harder and it is going to cause heat. So I'm not saying that we need to work at top speed all the time. It depends on what you're doing. As long as you're dealing with a product and doing product removal or shaping the nails, you need to try speed that is at least 20,000 rotations per minute. This mistake leads to so many problems. Incorrect angle. Let's say you would like to remove the product and instead of using the correct angle, you just dive in too deep. And instead of removing product, we're going to damage natural nails. So there is no right angle for everyone, for every single drill bit, for every single nail type. So it depends. That's why, unfortunately, I cannot give you just one formula that is going to work for everyone. When you're working, whether it's carbide, diamond, ceramic drill bit, you need to understand what you are doing. If you would like to remove the product, that means we're going to technically shave some layers from the top. That's why the drill bit is supposed to be located flat on top of the nail, not like this. If you would like to push back the cuticles, then the angle should be very similar to the one when you're working with pusher, trying to push them back. And regardless of what we're doing, we're not supposed to press onto the natural nail or to the skin. This is one of the most popular mistakes among my students, excessive pressure. When you're trying to do something, let's say file off the gel from the nails and it's not working, it's just our brain that automatically tells you, hey, you need to press harder, you need to try because that's natural. Let's say you take a pen and you're writing something and you see that there are some gaps and um, so you try to press harder and then it's working. That's why this is something what we naturally would like to do when something is not working. But once you press harder, it may lead to different problems such as heat spikes, damaged nails. So if you need to press hard to make your electric nail file work, that means something is wrong. Whether your electric nail file is not powerful enough Maybe the speed is too low. If you're working at, let's say, 5,000 rotations per minute, that's too slow for product removal. Or maybe the drill bit is not good enough, or maybe it's simply dull. Maybe this is the carbide bit you've been using for a year now, and it's not sharp anymore. It's just not going to do its work. So check all these things before trying to press harder. Ideally, when you're working with carbide or ceramic or diamond, any kind of bits, you're not supposed to press. You need to use a pretty light touch and the drill itself and the power of the e-file and the speed are going to do their work. The only exception might be chamois or different kind of soft beads that are designed for buffing the nail or applying the cuticle oils. It was the overview of the most common mistakes when working with electric nail file. Let me know if you've done any of this. I think I did them all because when I started, nobody taught me how to work with electric nail file. So I thought I need to create this course. I have an online course it's called eFile 101 and it's suitable for beginners. We're going to cover all you need to know about electric nail files, about drill bits, about the angles you're supposed to work with, about the proper speed, and also we're going to do a lot of practice. We're going to practice on swatch sticks, on tips, on eggs, 
on yourself and only after that we are going to do hands-on practice on models. Once you complete the course, you will get a certificate of completion. Also, it includes mini ebook, which is called Nail Drill Bits book. It includes all you need to know about different shapes and sizes of the drill bits, which one you need to choose for certain things, such as product removal or fills. I will leave the link down below under this video so you can join the class. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post different videos such as nail art tutorials or mistakes overview, just like this one every week. See you in my next one. Goodbye!